Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Sunday, March 5th edition of VR News. Going to probably have an intro at the start of this video. Just want to get your guys' feedback and thoughts on it. And like I said the other night, be brutally honest. Uh, I could take or leave intros, both as a viewer and as a creator of content. I am not bothered either way. I've avoided it till now because my thought process was you're more likely to have somebody not watch a video because they're irritated by the intro than have somebody not watch your video because there is no intro. I seem to think that's valid logic, but I want to know what you guys think. I asked two real life people, Exidy, of course, my friend, and he loved it. He really likes it. His personal system, though, equates quality with intros. In other words, he expects that. He says it's a refinement of process almost, right? I don't share that view. Like I said, I could take it or leave it. But my wife, the other person I asked, the exact opposite. So her thinking was very cheesy with extra cheese and that she personally can't stand intros and will avoid videos or YouTubers with intros. Now, minute-long intros bother me. 15 seconds at the high end. For, mine is 15 seconds, and that's, again, the high end for me. 5, 10 seconds, probably preferable. So, all right. Speaking of you guys, viewers, Dano Masalaru, he sent me a link. Thank you, Dano to an update for the Doom 3 BFG VR mod. And you guys might recall, I did a quick look on that game, loved it, finished it. It was just a fantastic top 10 VR experience, hands down. I know there were quite a few of you upset at the time because it didn't offer teleportation. It had just smooth locomotion. Well, as of today, or yesterday actually, no more. Now it does have a teleportation mechanic, and it looks very easy to use, like Solace Project, raw data, that type of a teleportation. So get on over and play it. I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, probably over 10, 12 hours of playtime easy, I would say. Depending on your pacing and the difficulty you choose, that's going to factor in. And I recommend start light because it can get tough. All right. Oculus Story Studios. These are the guys behind Quill, the productivity app. Well, their recent project is called Talking with Ghosts, and it's, as they're calling it, a set of four illustrative VR films. And they're going to be showcasing these at the Tribeca Film Festival on April 21st. So there's four. There's Fairground, which is about two childhood friends revisiting an old fairground where their divergent interpretations of their past and future collide. The Neighborhood, a ghost tale of his relationship with the house, house's inhabitants over the centuries. The Reservoir, a couple's relationship drama unfolds as they play the most surreal game of mini golf you've ever seen. I did just read that, mini golf, wow. And finally, Tattoo Warrior, an epic story of war and love told entirely through a 3D tattoo ribbon. Yeah, a 3D tattoo ribbon. So very artsy, I'm taking it. But uh, yeah, my guess would be they may be released to coincide with the Tribeca Film Festival or the more likely shortly after we can we can see those in stores next article has to do with unity and unreal as developmental game engines so statistically and they didn't get much into the specifics on where the stats are coming from but according to this upload vr article 59 percent of virtual reality developers are using unity now when i think of unity Immediately what comes to mind isn't Windows gaming, it's Android mobility gaming, because that was their bread and butter. That's kind of how they became popular. Uh, being able to create something and then deploy to like iOS, Android, PC is a strength of that program. 
So even with 59% using Unity, devs make more money, according to this, with Unreal. If you think about it for a sec, it makes sense because you've got a large percentage of indie companies that are using Unity. And Unreal just tends to be viewed, even though indies use it as well, it tends to be viewed as a more triple A high level game engine than Unity. Not It's not perceived as being as user friendly and communal. I think that's a fair statement. And I think that goes a long way to explaining the money situation, right? Why there's more to be made there on the Unreal side. There's a few more stats they throw around. Too many to get into here. So you guys can check that out on your own leisure. Link below. We looked at LG's new Vive clone style headset last week. One of the things I didn't really show was the visor, which has the ability to flip up. I mentioned it, but didn't really show it. So here's a couple of pictures that show it regular. And then on the gentleman's head in the flipped up position. Super handy. If you've ever done VR gaming, which of course most of us have, uh, it's a nuisance having to, you know, pull it off to do certain things. Granted, you've got your cameras, you've got, you can look down through the bridge of your nose or do that look, right? Everybody's done that from time to time. But at the end of the day, being able to just flip a visor up, that's a pretty handy feature. And my bet is next generation, we're going to see that pretty much be commonplace. And that's the beauty of having competition. As we move forward in VR, good design choices are probably going to stay and poor ones get discarded and left behind. That's not always the case. Sometimes, you know, the poorer technology or the not better solution is the market favorite. But in VR, I think it's going to mean the good features get picked up, the bad ones left behind for the most part. All right, this next story. Haven't done one of these uh, China stories for a long time, but uh, apparently China is building an entire village to support virtual reality technology. Now, we know there is a high level of state sponsorship in China for VR, for backing virtual reality. We also know, or you may not, but there's a few Chinese, well, rather expats that I follow that live in China and work there, and one is married and has a kid there, and they talk about everyday life. And one of the things that they have shown is how precariously close their real estate bubble is to bursting, and how spectacularly crazy that would be if that happens because they have entire towns built with nobody living in them and 10 years later they're starting to crumble into dust because there's a lack of quality there's a lack i mean there's all kinds of issues and that would be its own show suffice it to say i'm a little apprehensive about an entire town dedicated to virtual reality as cool as that concept sounds I got lots of questions and probably not a lot of time to ask them or get answers for them. But their plan is by 2019 to have 50 plus companies with a total annual capacity of producing 1.5 million VR related hardware equipment. That creates an annual revenue of a billion, which is basically 145,000 or 145 billion, I think is what they're saying. 145 million has to be, because that would be way too high. 145 million and 3,500 new jobs. They're offering all kinds of rebates and grants and rewards for this. So it's a state-sponsored initiative. Like I said, if that bubble ever bursts, I don't think you could outrun that bubble if you're uh, in China. So it'll be interesting to see. If that town gets built and exactly who, if anyone, <laughs> moves in there. All right, this next story. A little bit of the strange. A musician who I hadn't heard of before today, who goes by the pseudonym, among others, of Father John Misty. He was on SNL Saturday Night Live singing a song 
that had virtual reality in it. And the opening lines for the song are, betting Taylor Swift every night inside the Oculus Rift after Mr. and the Mrs. finished dinner and the dishes. Apparently that caught a lot of people's attention. And his message is about virtual reality and how disturbing the thought of, well, let's read his exact statement. Here's his response when he was asked about it. He goes, and if you don't think that this virtual reality thing isn't going to turn into sex with celebrities, then you're kidding yourself. That face recognition stuff, I mean, there are people working on it right now. It's absurd. Someone sitting with this headset on, you know? Oh, God, it's just how many different ways do human beings need to masturbate? Okay, my initial reaction would be, why the hell do you care, Misty John Father? Why? Who cares? Why do you care how frequently or with what people masturbate. I don't get it. I, I, don't, I don't understand why he would care, right? Now, I've mentioned this before, but I mention it again just within the context of this story. I was brought up in a Northwestern European culture where sexuality was not a taboo thing. It was not a big deal. Topless beaches were the norm. Seeing family members nude was the norm. My father, my mother, I'm not scarred because of that. We grew up with nudity and your body and all of that being okay. It's violence that's not that good. And in fact, if you look, a movie in Northwestern Europe, it's more likely to be banned because of violence than it is nudity or sexuality or, you know, sexual scenes. Whereas in North America, it's almost the opposite. You know, heads getting blown off, not a problem. Show one nipple, stop the presses, right? So again, not a judgment thing, even though it does definitely sounds like a judgment, just laying down the context for this, because that exactly there, that kind of mentality seems to be what's bugging him. The fact that he cares so much about something he really doesn't need to care about. Are people going to do stuff like that? Are there programs that are going to let people put celebrity heads? Yeah, but you know what? Somebody could buy a blow-up doll, take Taylor Swift's photograph from a magazine, cut her head off in the picture, and stick it to the doll. How's that different? I don't think it is, but whatever. I am not Misty John the Father. So there you go. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Making a lot of really, you know, mountains out of molehills? That's my opinion. All right. And then lastly, just a bit of a graphical card comparison guide. We've done some talking about NVIDIA lately. I don't want to forget about AMD. So this is exactly that. It looks at the various Polaris cards shows their specs, and within the next few weeks, VR Focus is the website, they're going to be doing some benchmarks and seeing how these various cards perform in virtual reality. So, very cool, you get the RX 480, the Pro WX series, which is three cards, and then the Pro SSG, which I guess is their high-end card, 10,000 US, holy smokes, very expensive too, but out sometime this year. So be interesting to see because there's not too many options on the AMD side currently. Certainly there's the RX 480s and really if you're running them crossfire, you probably don't need much else, but it would be nice to see more options. So I am curious how these cards end up performing. All right, guys, again, my voice, losing it. Hope you guys had an awesome weekend. Unfortunately for most of us, Work starts again tomorrow. As always, guys, cheers.